I realised that for a lot of first time sewers it might be quite daunting to make a garment or make a dress that's ready to wear and to show people the next day. And so I wanted to do a video about quite something that was quite low stakes and that's going to be a pair of pyjamas. Um, a very nice pair of pyjamas actually. So you know how maybe you're going to Topshop and they have these very dainty little floral shorts and vest top pyjama sets that will often be you know, 25 to £30. Pounds. I, th I think that's quite expensive. So I'm going to do my version of that sort of thing. In order to, to make a little pair of pyjamas then you need to go and find some cotton or poly cotton. It's one of the easiest things to find even if you don't have a great fabric shop or a great market store near you. I'm sure that they will have some sort of you know, thinnish cotton for about two to four pounds a meter with you know a nice floral or maybe a gingham pattern on so that's what you can use and um it means you can buy some fabric and you know it won't be a, dis a disaster if you mess it up it's almost like a little practice for when you make your real clothes so let's go so how much fabric do you need you can buy any fabric that's at least a meter worth which is basically all fabrics and so I've got the fabric laid out in front of us. The edge closest to you should be sort of the neat manufactured edge. The edge up here needs to be the one that they cut at the fabric shop. Okay, I wasn't too happy with the video that I did for the shorts pattern queen, so I'm going to show you one here instead. The first thing that you need to do is take your hip measurement, times that by 1.2 and divide it by 4. So for me that's 28 centimetres and I'm going 28 centimetres across from the raw edge of the fabric inwards. The line that you draw it needs to be 25 centimetres from the bottom um, but if you if you like it can be uh, a bit longer depending on how long you want your shorts. But what you do need to do is halfway along this 25 centimetre line mark the halfway point so mark a point at 12.5 centimetres. Um, if you if you're making long shorts at all, then just do 12.5 centimeters from the top of it. Once you've done that, you need to draw another section. This needs to be no matter what size you are. This needs to be 13 centimeters further along from the 28 centimeter mark, and it needs to be 8 centimeters up from the bottom. Again, if you're making shorts to a different size, um, it needs to be. 17 centimeters from the top that you would mark along. So now you've got these two two points. You've got one corner at the bottom, and you've got the 12.5 midway point on the line we drew earlier. And between those things, you need to draw a curve that looks a bit like this. And that's it. That's your shorts pattern. We just need to cut four of these. Cool. That it may seem that shape that we just drew is actually all you need to draw for when you make a simple pair of shorts. The trick is that we need to cut out four of these and I'm going to only do two at a time just because it's a, if you try and fold everything you get a big uh, square of wastage in this sort of gap in this corner so what I'm going to, I'm going to do it in two stages. First of all, so I've got my finger at the, at the corners where we just squared everything off so 25 centimetres up I've got this top line and I'm going to lift that and fold it over. So now, so now I've got that short shape on a, a double layer. So you see now we've got the shape of the shorts with this curve over here and the little 8cm line. This is the edge of the fabric that's just sat on top here for the time being. Then we're going to cut around this line, cut along this line, so I'm going to have two pieces. When you're at the bottom just cut on the underlying fabric where the edge of the, the bit you folded already is, so obviously don't, don't cut into that. A little short bit. This big long curve. This is where the fold is at the top so just snip along this top and you've got two pieces in. now back to the fabric we just cut that out from so you see it was here now it's not if we just soldered the fabric again then we would have cut it like this in a 
but we would have just lost this whole semicircular fabric. So what you need to do is, so this is where it was, it's just been cut out. You need to flip it over and then like that. And you see in this remaining bit of fabric, we've actually gone and get some use out of it instead of having a random circle cut out in the middle. So just line up the fabric, line up your pattern, your foot or your first piece with the edges that are already here. And so I'll go along, along the straight side and then the curve which is here. And again because it was folded we've got this folded edge and just hold the fabric still and cut along into the fold. Now I want to stack all four pieces together all following the same shape. So I've got four layers of fabric here. Just to explain, so this is the top of the waistband. This is the part that sort of goes around your leg. And then this is the side seam. And I just want a cute detail to happen on the side seam, which is when you get sort of like runner shorts, you often get a curved edge on the thigh. And I think that's nice, so I'm going to add one in here. All that takes is literally rounding it off what's, what's already there. See that? Now for the top. Okay, so now I've done the shorts, I'm going to work on the top. This is going to be the most simple vest shape you can possibly do. Um, you just need one measurement to start with, and that's just around your chest. So once you've got that measurement, you just add 15, so for me that would be 103 centimetres. And now on my fabric, you can see here there's a square from where the um, shorts were cut out. I'm just going to work with this one again. This is the tidy edge towards you and the messy fabric cut edge is here. So I'm going to fold this to be half the length of chest plus 15 so for me that was 88 plus 15 is 103 half of that is 51.5 and so I want the half width to be 51.5 because I've only just got a meter of this I'm obviously reaching the edge and because my fabric was only a meter wide and yours may well be longer I've got 50 centimetres left here because we've got 50 centimetres already. Um, but if you've got a longer fabric, you might you you will just measure down 50 from one edge to there. Or if you want a longer top, feel free to have a slightly longer top, or this is the longest I can have without buying a significant amount more of fabric. So anyway, right now this is 50 by 50 effectively. Yours will be around 50 by whatever uh, your measurement was. I'm going to fold it in half again. So now there's a double fold here, which will be your centre front and your centre back. And then some edges there. If you remember when I was making, actually I was making this dress, and we just did a loose armpit measurement, so from halfway through your shoulder to a place where it would be comfortable to have a sort of vest in this sort of curve shape, very loosely, and try and place that down onto the fabric. So watch how I'm doing it. I'm taking it from here. I'm going to lay it down from the top of the fabric, and I'm going to draw this shape on. And um, we'll talk about necklines later, but for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna do another high one. So in this corner here, where you've got the fold and the top of the fabric, just do a fill. I did it before with a plate, which is fine. 
So now if I simply got a neck and, all, and a side here that needs to be cut, there's the neckline. Just to cross the top of the sleeve. The arm. So here, two of them have already been cut, and then this one's fallen off. So I'm just gonna slice that. And then for continuity, and just a nice extra bit of detail, I'm gonna do another curved edge as I did with the short. So just this corner here, round it off by something. And that's it. So um, now it's time to start sewing and there's one, it is sometimes easy to make a mistake when you're sewing any shorts or trousers together because you remember we've got that weird curve shape that we made. Um, but this is the way to go about it. You take two, of the, so we, we've got four pieces all the same at the minute. If you take two pieces, you put them right sides together. And we're going to sew only along this curve, okay? This bit, we're not going to touch it for the time being. So sew along here and then get your other pair. And sew along right sides together, the curve only. So now I'm sewing along this curve. And do the same for the other pair as well. So, um, on both of my pairs of shorts, I've sewn the curve together. So now I've got a weird shape. But you can see, you can recognise that shape from shorts that you may have had. What you need to do is, so you've got this short edge here. Remember, those were both 8 centimetres. We've just sewn them together. And you take the other one to which you did the exact same thing and put these short edges together and you line up those those center seams um, that you just did and you sew across in a straight line through here so now it will be 16 centimeters long straight across so now you've got this big weird shaped thing um, in order to make these into a recognizable pair of shorts we just need to do the side seams you hold so you hold the fabric like this you've got one pair of shorts there you bring up this side so you've got a pointy edge together and a curvy edge together and you sew along here repeat on the other side okay so um at the minute you've got a rather wide looking pair of shorts um what we need to do is put some elastic up along the top so that they will bunch up a bit and fits properly so i went out and got some elastic there wasn't any white, they only had black, and they've got one point, this is 1.5 centimetres, where maybe a centimetre would do. Um, but anyway, so we need to make a channel at the top of this waistband that fits in here. In order to do that, we need to fold down about, I'm just going to say about half a centimetre, and fold down again to 1.5 centimetres, basically so there will be enough space for the for the elastic to fit. I'm going to press down and sew along at the very very bottom edge because I mean you could do a bigger thing but then they are quite short as it is the shorts so you don't want to have a massive hem and have the tiny shorts ever. So that's what I'm going to do just roll down a little bit, roll down a bigger bit And then either sew straight onto it or press and sew is probably a slightly safer option. Okay, so now I've sewn the channel all across the top of the shorts and I've left a little gap for me to work with here. I've got my elastic and to cut that to size you just need to tie it around your waist, I mean your hips. At a level that sort of, you know, it sort of clings to you. 
feel like it would hold your shorts up properly. And then give yourself space to tie it and just chop that. Then we need to thread it through. Um, there are a number of ways to do this. I quite like to get a hairpin because I'm safety pin's even better, but I'm going to use a hairpin and just go in through this. You can see the gap that I left open. It's going to go in there, and you can feel the sort of you can feel the hairpin. So you just push it along through the channel, thread it through the entire way. And the fabric starts to bunch up in a pleasing manner. And now I've reached the other end. So just quickly bring out the elastic. So I've got elastic on each one. I'm just going to tie it in a knot and redistribute it all the way around. Woohoo! And that's it. Those these will fit you with shorts. Um, I'll put the back where. I left a gap. I'm going to just tuck it under and return to the sewing machine to trap it inside. And if you slip those guys on, you will have a pair of shorts. Um, I mean, they're pretty small shorts, which is fine for pyjamas. If you wanted to, rather than cutting 25 centimetres in length, you could cut, you know, 50 if you wanted and have real long shorts. It's entirely up to you, but I just did it this length because it was efficient to use up a metre of fabric. Right side facing you also need to sew the two top of the shoulder pieces that are on your vest. Just straight along here. And having done the shoulders I'm just going to keep on the keep on the long side of the fabric and sew up these sides. Just so you've got under the armpit area, pinch all the way along the bottom, and again, don't go into that curve area because we've got work to do on that in a second. So, for the bow that's a big rectangle folded in half, right sides together, right sides together, and just going to sew along this side, along the long side and halfway to this one but no more because we need to check it inside out. For the middle area of the bow as well, remember we just got this little 5cm by 10cm strip. We just want to turn that, fold it so the right sides are together and sew along here to make a tube. To put the bow together, um, I took my sewn square and I turned it inside out. We've just got here a little opening where we turned it through and that's going to have to be sewn up by hand. Um, so that's that. Then the tube that I sewed as well, I've turned that inside out, so just the seams here. So to get this bow locked down, I've got my two bits that I've turned inside out, the rectangle and the strip. And I just need to press these to be nice and flat and neat. With the rectangle, you just go in, maybe with something a bit pointy, and push those corners out so they're nice and sharp. Then I'm laying this out. And I'm going to press it down and also where we left this gap for turning inside out, when I'm hand sewing in a minute I'll sew that together but for now let's just press it. Tuck in the messy bits here. Fold them in on themselves and make it nice and flat and straight and press that. That's done and the same with the cheek. Um, I'm going to lay that so that the seam goes down the middle of the back and from the front you can't see any, so there's no suggestion of any seam. So press that down and now it comes to the point where these two will fit together. I need to just, with this, I hold the centre point on this and then just pinch and gather the fabric up so that it's a bow. And with this guy, I just wrap it round. Wrap 
it on a good few times, making sure that the in the end you'll have the messy edge at the back. And I'm going to hand stitch this together because it's just the easiest way. And literally just put a few stitches in the back. And then with this messy edge, I'm just going to do some tiny stitches to fill that up. And that's it. Um, it's not going to be that easy to show you in person how I'm hand stitching this bow. Um, but the first thing, but I, I'll try and give you a brief idea. So I've got the um, strip that you know about. And then just wrapping that around the bow and tucking away this, this raw edge and folding it underneath itself just so there's nothing raw. Now I've got that seam there, I'm just going to put a few hand stitches through that. Just the easiest running stitch in and out, like if you were sewing on a button or something like that. And feel free to trap some of the fabric of the actual bow when you're stitching through it because then this won't slot out of the of you know a loop that you've just sewn together. And having done that, whilst the needle and thread is still inside the bow, I'm just going to place it on here about where I think it will look nice and just continue to do some normal hand stitches throughout this loopy bit. So I've attached the um, the centre, the central piece just so that the bow stays nice and upright. What I like to do is sew the top corner of the bow to the to the appropriate position on the on the vest. And to do that, so I obviously start through the back but it rather than but just one tip is rather than go through the entire bow bringing your needle out, I just try and catch the um the back layer of fabric because you you know it's a piece of fabric fold in half. So if you can just catch that the in, the back layer and then you won't have any uh, stitches on the front. I'm um, sorry I can't show it to you better, but I've got it's like white thread and white fabric in a in a bad webcam. Um, but you can ask me in in comments or whatever if you're having trouble with it. Okay, and just for added cuteness purposes, the last thing I want to do on these pyjamas before they're finished is put a lace trim around all the edges. If you don't fancy it, you can just do a rolled hem, as I've done on previous videos where you just fold something over, fold it again, press that so it's neat and just stitch directly on top of that so you're trapping everything in. But instead, I've got this lace, um, and I'm going to do all the edges. So I've measured around, measure around the armholes, measure around the neck, the bottom of the vest and then the bottom of the two shorts legs as well altogether that comes to about four and a four and a half meters for me which is quite a lot but i bought this lace off ebay i got 10 whole meters for 99p and given that the fabric was so cheap i'm okay about spending 46p on just making the dramas really cute particularly if they're a present or something like that i don't mind making the effort so yeah measure all the way around work out how much you need but i would recommend that if you can wait a few days as i've done which is why i'm wearing a different outfit um, if you can wait a few days, get it off eBay. It's really, really cheap. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to have a cheap haberdashery near you. Um, so anyway, how do we attach this? It's not too much hassle. And it's kind of similar to the roll tail, apart from one less step. So get the edge of your fabric. This is the inside. Fold it down like this. And then we're going to put the lace directly on we're going to put the lace so that the top lines up with the that fold that we did and so that raw edge will be hidden by this lace and then when you turn it inside out you will just have a nice bit poking out there um, so yeah just do that all the way around and then sew it okay so as you can see here all along here I folded in what I needed to fold in so that means I folded about a centimetre onto the inside and I just pinned the lace all the way along. Um, with the so remember you'll remember that we did the curve I did the curved edges um, like at the size of the vest and the short. You do exactly the same thing, it's not um, just in terms of folding it over, but when it, when it's a curved edge I would recommend giving it a bit of a press down um, just because obviously it doesn't fold quite as easily but um, don't worry if you feel like it's a bit lumpy or something like that because when you sew it it'll all be flat and fine. Um, so, yep, now I've got this done, I'm just going to sew along all these edges, do the four and a half metres of sewing that it entails, and then it'll be finished. I forgot to say as well, um, so I'm not cutting the lace at all to start, I'm just going to like do an edge, 
and then I'll be like, okay, the lace is finished, and then I'll cut that, and then do the next stage rather than cut, trying to cut pieces to size. There's no point. It's a waste of time. Okay, so once you've done all your edges, you'll have uh, your completed pair of pajamas. You might, some might argue that I've gone a bit overboard on the lace, but I like them. I think they're cute. And um, so this is the um, final product. So they're, they're reasonably baggy and loose because I don't like overly tight pajamas. I might be a bit cold in them if I if I wear them tonight because it's freezing outside. Um, but I think definitely they're a nice Christmas present and they're a nice beginner's project. And they're only two pound fifty, so you can't really complain, can you? Um, so I hope you will uh, decide to have a go and let me know how you get on. And hopefully you'll have you too will have an amazing pair of pajamas within a few hours.